Garbro. And I'd like to mention uh, oral Pass comments. What? Pass me for right now. Okay, thank you. Um, oral comments carry the same weight as written comments, so if you do have additional comments that you want to get to us and you're just reading off your comments, um, you can paraphrase for getting close to five minutes and you can just hand this to us uh, after we're done. Uh, the next speaker is Ms. Rosalind Bridges. Unfortunately, I'm a resident, excuse me, Rosalind Bridges, R O S E L Y E Bridges, B R I D G E S. Unfortunately, I am a landowner in Mitchell County, and I don't know what they're going to do for us to get it lower in the ground, but I pray that we'll follow Cockle County. I am a Cockle County graduate, and Cockle County is basically my home. Sandra has covered a lot of the things I was going to cover. In addition, I would like to say that the current gas line that is there, and I'm sorry I have my PowerPoint, and John can prove this, but, but the current gas line we have is 10 inches, and the one they're going to place in there now is supposedly 36 inches in circumference. So that, as you can see, is a large difference than what we have now. Let well, the record show that this bridge is holding up a I'm sorry, it's very basic, but we have lived next to this gas line all of my life. My family helped put that gas line in so that other people could have energy. They did not want to do it, but they did work with the people because at that time, the counties did not have energy. Unfortunately, we allowed the other lines like the electricity lines to come in and we try to coexist with these companies because people do need energy. Now we regret this. In 1993, we allowed the natural gas pipeline to put extensions in and we worked with them then. We tried to have a good relationship with them and we have so far, but now it concerns me that you're gonna put this 36 inch gas line like Sandra has conveyed to you next to this one. I've lived there all my life. I know what that gas, gas line looks like. And after 1993, which has been 21 years, we still have to go up on the hill, because I live on Pelham Escarpment. We have to cover that up, and my son has Bermuda grasses, and he can only bale hay on that property. But we watch this sandy lawn that shifts continuously to try to make sure this pipeline is covered. And like everyone in this room who's also on the pipeline, we have always been <coughs> landowners who maintain it to help others, but we never get recompense. We never get money for this. We do this and we pay property taxes every year, each and every year. <coughs> <coughs> Sandra discussed the old pipeline. Now this, John, is something I have to say. I worked in a business office for 40 years. I worked in Darnie County. It's a poor county. It's sad that this has been chosen <coughs> as a station for those people there. They have enough problems now, just like we do. We're agricultural related in the rural areas. But in my 40 years of working in a business office, I have never had comments made to me. I've seen some bad things before. But these comments, I refuse to speak to any of these people. I don't want to work with them, and I can work with anybody, because I'm in the accounting field. But these are business ethics that I've read on Spectre Energy's website, how they work with you environmentally and everything. But these comments I want to convey to you are just a few, and I'm sorry that I'm having to read these, but I don't even want to repeat them. Just sign the document. It's a done deal. The pipeline is coming through. There is nothing you can do. There is no sense in fighting this. You have no choice. Do you want us to put your name on the list? That was bad. I took that call. Look. A gas line is safer than a highway. My response, you don't have to worry about a highway exploding during the night. You might as well sign they're going to take your property anyway. And the last, remember, eminent domain always rules, FERC always approves. Question, 
John. Is this true? I know 90%. I heard a while ago. Is this true? Has there ever been a permit not approved for Spectre Energy by FERC? Have y'all always approved their, their projects? 100%. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, you have to answer. I'm just asking a question. Because that is something I have heard over and over and over again. That they always get everything they ask for. <laughs> and I know the current pipeline would like to have bid on this project, and they probably would have been less invasive. They would have expanded a little bit like they did in 93 on our farm. But they can't get the bids. And I asked at one of the Sable, excuse me, Sabal meetings. Why, why do they always get the bids? Why does Spectre always get the bids? And they said, they're the cheapest. And I said, you're exactly right from everything I've read. You are the cheapest. And in closing, we are all caretakers of the future, and we have a responsibility to leave behind something better than what we have been given to protect while we are here. I work every day to make sure my property taxes are paid on my farm that has been in my generation forever. And my farm is mainly timberland that was put there by God and wild grass. But we also in the family have cattle. I'm concerned about this pipeline with cattle. We have agricultural products. And we do everything we can for our community. And we do a lot of charitable work and all we just are trying to help those people too. But I'm asking you sincerely, if you have approved them 100% in the past, please reconsider. Don't do this to this fine community. I am concerned about the Lord. You know that now. With really good cause. Because once a pipeline explodes like the one I saw in Alabama on a video recently, I don't know if we can recover the water the aquifer from that. I mean, I'm already policing this pipeline we have now because we have terrorists in, in the world. Now. And in conclusion, if this isn't for Georgia, then why are we here tonight? And I thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the next speaker is.